Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is Mariam Lebu and with me is my husband. Sayyid Suleiman Takuma. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah. During the last episode, um, we shared with you the turbulent early years of our marriage, the first five to six years, the conflict, um, the various unusual ways of fighting, and then the turning point. Saeed shared how I asked him to critique me and the inventory, that personal self-check that we had to start to uh, start doing. In other words, the jihad bin nafs, yes. um, struggling to overcome our own demons and conquer them and find a new path to making sure the fight stop. Yeah. Um, they can't stop completely, but we developed the art of what I call fighting without fighting, as Bruce Lee says in Enter the Dragon. No, no. What kind of methods do you remember that worked when it came to conflict resolution? Well, the one thing is, first of all, the importance of communication. Yeah. Um, the method of communication matters. Is it verbal? Is it written? To make sure that you're getting your concerns across and you are understood. The whole point that people fail to realize when you have a misunderstanding is that you are working to be understood. So you work on making sure that my concerns, my worries, my feelings are properly communicated without insults, without denigrating your spouse, without condescension. And contempt. Uh, and contempt and without using what you're told in confidence against your spouse. They confide in you in a problem they ever had with someone. When you get angry, you use it to hurt. To I poke did that at, a lot. To, to poke at them. <laughs> um, so I want couples to realize the whole purpose of being at home is to be at peace yeah. and in love, not at war and in contempt. So this is important where you pick your words, you know the words that have a tendency to annoy, to upset. Or trigger. Or trigger. Yeah. And you avoid them because ultimately the objective, the ultimate goal, let me repeat this, the ultimate goal is peace and love. So that was the first thing we understood. And I told you about Mariam's long letter, then it became moderate, then it became short. And then when we were communicating properly, Mariam would uh, make an appointment I'd make an appointment uh, yeah, to fight. Yeah. Um, if something was bothering me, I realized since he said I had a big mouth, I had to find alternatives. So I would actually tell him, say, it's something is bothering me. Um, whenever you feel it's okay, I would like to talk. And at first it was very hard because he didn't want to face those kind of things. He wasn't comfortable with, let's sit and talk. So those are things that, alhamdulillah, we've come a long way because right now he'll just say, hey, come, let's talk. However, then he would sometimes take about a day or two. Inside, I would be burning with anger and I want to blow up, but I kept controlling myself and focusing on the fact that I want a resolution. So I had to learn patience, which was something I didn't have either. But Alhamdulillah, by the time Said calls me and says, hey, come, what do you want to talk about? Sit here, tell me what's bothering you. It's not possible for me to blow up um, because we are, he's not calling me to talk when already I'm burning. So sometimes I know my brother used to say this, save your anger for another day. Um, if something is bothering you, you're burning up inside, wait a day or wait two days before talking about it. it the fire won't be as hot. Um, there's this quote I say often, don't light a match in a petrol station. So when you're both hot, when you are angry, that's not the time to try and resolve issues. What I found also that really helped is the fact that when he says, come sit down, and I sit next to him, there's some form of physical contact between us. It douses the flames. It just makes you feel a bit more intimate. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for conflict to come at that it's, point. It's, it's hard to sit next to somebody when you're really mad and you're hot. Yeah. So, and sometimes when I take a day or two, I'm trying to calm, to put out the fire before we sit down and have that conversation. Yeah. And by the time we get to the point, I'm also mentally prepared not to allow anything that she may have said out of anger or frustration annoy me. So you mentally prepared, I'm not going to get angry, I'm yeah. not going to get upset, I will filter out the annoying or irritating phrases or words and just try to get to the crux of the matter and address the issue. So that is why sometimes I buy the time. But the interesting thing, when we improve the communication style, it went into so many other areas, to the, even to as something as minute 
as how a perfume reacts to your body. Yeah. So you can get an expensive perfume that smells good in the shop, but before we go out, I'll test it on me and say, Mariam, how do I smell? She'll say, awful. That's the end of that perfume. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. I get a very nice outfit. I love the color. And she says, you get lost in that color. It doesn't fit you. Because we are Fanta and Coke. That, so we that, have to make sure his colors that, suit him. That outfit, <laughs> that outfit is gone. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. And I, I know she's looking out for my interest, my well-being. She wants the best version of me to be out there. Yeah. She then willingly comes to me and says, how do I look? Now, gentlemen, there is a trick to this. Don't go criticizing the woman before she comes asking you for your opinion. My suggestion is wait till she asks you what you think. I never tell Mariam that is awful. I bite my lip, I wait. How do I look? I say, oh good, she's giving me the opportunity. Don't wear that outfit. She'll say, okay. But if I make the mistake knowing my wife, she's all decked up in this color that looks awful on her and she wants to go out and I say, Mariam, you know that outfit looks awful. That's what I'm going to wear out then. Because I didn't wait, I know her. So you learn each other, you study each other, you know each other, you have to know each other. You have to know what buttons not to push. You have to know what ticks them off. So we did a lot of that. And that questioning that she said we did, that asking the question, because now, you also came up with that idea. I want you to talk about it. Yeah. Like he mentioned during the previous episode when I asked him to critique me, one thing that I know I do more recently, uh, because you, uh, you continue to evolve and you find new methods. Um, if I'm to say, Said, what is it about me you don't like? Um, he knows that I'm so conscious of trying to work on all those things that it's hard for those things he has said he doesn't like to feature again. However, one of the ways I've found that has worked for me and has helped is, Said, in what way can I make you happier? And that question really, really helps a lot because um, you now can try and make sure you fulfill your spouse's fantasies even greater. Um, how can I make you happier? It's such an important question. Some people aren't comfortable asking this of themselves. Some people aren't comfortable going within. But honestly, your spouse is the most important person in your life. Yeah. After Allah, who is not a person, but Allah first, and then yourself. Your spirituality? Yeah, so your spirituality and first, then, your then yourself, then yeah. your spouse. Um, when I say yourself, I mean if you're okay, you're in order, it's so much easier to give your all. So even our children know that we come before them, like Baba comes before them, because if we are okay, they will be okay. We'll raise them together. We'll, they will see the best of us. Um, talking of children, I think there's another thing about conflict that was so important. We agreed first we wouldn't bring a child into a world where there was no love, but we promised we would never fight in front of our kids. Now, I remember one day I was brooding and I was sitting in another room. My husband was in one room and we've always had the habit if we're in the house, we're always in the same room. And the kids grew up, see, grew up seeing that. But the youngest came and said, Mama, why are you in this room? And why is Baba in that room? I was like, oh, I wanted to watch something else. I didn't, I was actually upset with her, their dad. So he's like, but you should be watching what he's watching. And I was like, I didn't feel like it. He said, so you're fighting? I was like, no, we're not fighting. And he's like, prove it. Then he went and got his brother. Yeah, he got back up. So he went and called his brother. His brother came and stood over me and said, Mama, I hear you and Baba are fighting. I was like, we're not fighting. So he, they both dragged us. Yeah, they went and dragged you. Yeah, they dragged me to come Baba. and meet the, his, their dad. Mm -hmm. And as I entered the room, I had to quickly make sure I sent him a coded message. I said, can you imagine these monkeys think we are fighting? They went on to say, yeah. if you're not fighting, prove it. Prove it. So my so husband stood I, up. I stood up. And he, came, he gave happened. me a hug, In the and after the boys said, better, and they left, guess what? I was so quick to wipe him <laughs> off. I was so upset. <laughs> but, you know, it made us laugh. Yeah. And the silliness of the whole thing, that physical contact again doused the fire. And we realized we were just being so silly, and we sat down. He said, Mariam, come, mm, sit down, let's talk. We sorted it out. So I think several important things, um, which inshallah during the next episode Before we'll we share could, with you. Ma Mariam said something about fulfilling your spouse's fantasies. Yeah. Um, it's an ibadah to fulfill 
the intimacy needs of one's wife. It's also an act of Ibadah to make sure that you help your wife and yourself to remain chaste. We will talk about that during the no, next episode. No, I wanted to say, next episode, yes. No, I just wanted to say, in our conversations, <laughs> yeah. in those conversations, uh, which many people find uncomfortable, it is necessary that spouses have those conversations with one another because that is one of the important aspects yeah. of marriage. And if one doesn't fulfill that, it becomes problematic. It will lead to other things. We'll talk about all that juicy stuff during the next episode, insha'Allah. So please join us. Assalamu alaikum from me and... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, oh, oh.